Hello amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the show. We're going to go over somebody else's methodology today. And this one is a cool methodology that likes to go for a wider scope again. Preferably something like star.example.com. It's a general setting started approach. After this stage, it will depend heavily on the target he's dealing with and what the offers are in terms of functionality. That's something that I find as well and that's something I, for me, I like to go for main applications. That's something a lot of people, a lot of people like to go for broad scope and I get it. You want that uncharted territory because you want the bugs that, that not a lot of other people have found yet. But the thing is, a lot of people think that main application targets are picked clean and you're right, they're picked clean but only of the most basic vulnerabilities, of the low-hanging fruit. Believe me, those old targets still hold plenty of vulnerabilities if you're just willing to look hard enough. Now the thing is that if you're looking for these main app vulnerabilities, you're also learning how to automate looking for all of these things. So that's why I always do it that way. But I like that he says that whatever whatever he finds, that's going to determine his next strategy. So um, that's something that's already a very good start. Um, I always begin by looking for subdomains for which he wrote the script. Uh, and he threw it together with a friend of his and it can be found here. So I'll put that in the link in the description if any of you guys feel like downloading that. It's a pretty good script. I highly, I highly advise you to go check it out. It's basically a wrapper around different data sources, um, different tools to, to query data sources like you, like uh, DNS, um, DNS recon, AMAS, um, like all of these different tools. So it's going to be looking for subdomains as far as we can see. And he's going to look for a 200 status code and all the way back URLs for that top level domain. He'll also supply security trails to API key while doing it. So, okay, that's, that's a pretty good script, pretty solid one. After he's done with that, he goes over Aquatone, um, over a list with the 200 status codes to get the screenshot. And while doing that, he grabs the master.txt file to look for certain keywords like API, dev, fraud, staging, etc. Now is usually the time where I start burp and begin to open uh, some subdomains that sound interesting, like in staging.example.com. That's something I always do as well. If I see a staging example or acceptance, uh, sorry, staging environment or acceptance environment, I always go and look at it because it might be containing some code that's not on the live production environment yet and it might be useful to look at that instead. Um, it uses Webalizer to get a feel of what technology the domain uses, that's something I always do as well. And he um, tries to see if my target uses mostly PHP, he won't bother trying to use ASP or ASPX X as an extension when trying content content discovery uh, he's, he's talking about directory boot forcing I make the same mistake a lot as well but it's content discovery in that case but it's a very good tip because it's something I always do as well whenever I'm looking for my content discovery I'm also going to look very specifically about what I'm doing I'm, I'm not going to try and look for any other endpoints than Jenkins endpoints if I'm looking on Jenkins servers, for example. So yeah, I'd, I'll narrow it down very specifically so I don't overdo it. And you can automate this to a degree as well. So it's not that hard. All you have to do is check what returns from your request. And if, it's, if it contains certain keywords, then you know that you're going to have to use that list instead of a general list or something like that. It'll help reduce the scan time of big scans a lot, especially if you like doing subdomain enumeration and all of that stuff. You sometimes end up with tens of thousands of subdomains and you want to scan them as efficiently as possible, not wasting too much time scanning items that you don't want to scan or need to scan for specific technologies. 
So after that is done, oh sorry, I think I forgot one, after browsing to a couple of sites that sparked his interest, either due to their name or because the screenshot was interesting, he usually starts directory brute forcing on them. Same for me, directory brute forcing, content discovery, trying to see if I can find anything there, <coughs> if that's all out anyway, uh, but I also go and manually explore of course. And after this whole process is done, I browse to interesting endpoints. Browsing is something I do as well, but I try to get a picture of the whole application. So I actually tend to click through the application. And of course, on API endpoints and all of the stuff, you, you don't have that luxury. But if it's like a swagger endpoint, then you still have that thing where you can just navigate and click through and see what endpoints are available to you to a degree. Um, but through an application, I like to click through and see what's happening as well. I mean, everything is doing that to fill up his burp suite sitemap. That's interesting as well, of course, because um, that's going to help you a lot in the long run, those specific calls. <clears throat> and once you get a good amount of requests, he starts to look through them, especially searching for parameters and trying to tamper with them. That's something I try to do as well, tampering with that specific parameter. Um, if that specific parameter says user type equals user, I'm going to try to change it to admin, of course. And I think a lot of you are going to try to do that because this is a super obvious example that I'm giving. But I'm going to give you a less obvious example. Let's say you're making an appointment and your appointment is always one hour long. Uh, and the parameters that get sent along are start date and end date. Now you might think this is inconspicuous, but what if you set a start date to a specific start date and the end date a year later? Well, then you don't have an hour long meeting, but you suddenly have a year long meeting, of course. So it should be <clears throat> that you're always looking for these specific vulnerabilities and that you're always going for these specific parameters that you can look for, that you can tamper with a little bit. Um, all of that stuff. So when it comes to filling out forms and fields, he uses simple H2 tags, that's pretty good. But then of course, what I also like to include is like a single quote or a double quote. I'm automatically testing for SQL injection as well. And maybe SSTI if it's possible, of course. And then he inspects the source code to see if it gets filtered out or not. It will usually prepend to the HTML tag with some gibberish. He will usually uh, prepend the HTML tag with some gibberish so he can easier find it in the source code like this. This is like just random text. He'll go looking for that random text in the source code and he'll see if his first H2 is, is if it's H2 here, if it's translated or not. So if it's filtered out, then of course he knows that he shouldn't be looking too much, but if the H2, if it catches, then of course it might be an interesting point to look for cross-site scripting. Now the only thing that I have to remark about this is that you're looking for HTML injection. That's the only context that you're looking in here. You're not looking in the HTML tag attribute injection. You're not looking in the JavaScript context. You're not looking in any more of the exotic context either. So um, <clears throat> that's something you might be able to export and to get get better at a little bit more, I shall say. Now, when he finds login pages, he doesn't try to brute force those, by, but try to take a couple of educated guesses at the password that is, of course. Now, of course, you can look at test, test, admin, admin, but also uh, look at the company name, um, try to make some variations on that, use cool for it. There's these, um, I, I can't remember, remember the process, but it's somewhere on my channel. You can, I think it's, um, I think it's chaining cool with John to create a password variation list based on a specific, uh, specific organization's website. And it's pretty cool because it's, 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 chillingly accurate if I recall my previous organization's passwords let's just say um, okay so that's about it pretty good methodology what I also try to look for is specific things like CSRF tokens if they exist where they should exist um, I try to look for if I am logging in I try to look for password reset tokens being leaked over HTTP that's something insider PhD told me about it's a pretty good one 
Now uh, I'm also looking for um, any SSRF, so any URL that resolves, I'm going to try SSRF on. I'm going to try local and remote file inclusion on, that's also something I'm going to try. Um, then of course there's X60, any SOAP endpoint that I see is going to get X60 tested properly. Um, uh, so there's there's many different things that you can still add to this if you wanted to. So yeah, definitely something that is already an extremely good start. But I hope you have something with those pointers. I hope they're useful to you. Thank you very much for sending this in. And thank you for letting this letting me review this. It's not that anonymous because your your uh, GitHub is in here, of course. But I don't think you it has to be anonymous. Um, it's a pretty good one, and you shouldn't be ashamed of this. So, thank you very much for submitting it, uh, and thank you for everybody else for watching. And if you have one you would like to submit yourself, just send me an email at info at dot com, and I'll review your hunting style. And I'll try to give you tips on your specific techniques. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye amazing hackers.